Hi everyone, welcome to round 9 of Nuremberg 1896. In this game, Lasker was playing Pillsbury, who we have seen before. And if you look at the position, Lasker has two extra pawns. In this position, we're going to play from Pillsbury's point of view. He and Lasker definitely have a big rivalry going around this time. So I would like you guys to pause your video and try to figure out what you would do here. This is very difficult. Uh, I think you should spend five to ten minutes minimum. And, all right. So, if you're done pausing, we're going to look at the answer now. Pillsbury played brilliantly in this game, and I think it may have won the brilliancy prize in the tournament. So there are a lot of tempting moves. Knight takes f5, followed by knight takes d5, is tempting, and it leads to a difficult defense for black if white sacrifices that piece. However, white actually has what looks like a forced win here. <clears throat> the move rook a1 is very strong. The bishop needs to move back. Now note if it goes bishop to c5, white can play knight takes f5, and this leads to some serious problems. After bishop takes, knight d6 check, and the attack is enormous. Whereas if pawn takes, bishop takes, this king is trapped in the center, the knight's going to take on d5. Black is virtually lost here. So in the game, Lasker played bishop back to e7. And now is when Pillsbury uh, unleashed his master blow. Rook takes a4, sacrificing the exchange. And after bishop takes e4, pause your video again if you haven't already figured it out and think about what white should do here. Pillsbury found a very nice move. Knight takes e6. And this was all part of his plan. So now he has sacrificed a whole rook. He gave up the exchange, gave up another piece. However, black's king is stranded in the middle of the board. And after the queen moves, for example, to c8, queen takes f5. There is no legitimate way out of queen to f7, or any number of strong moves, like knight to c7. Um, like, for example, if king to d7, trying to just escape somehow. Uh, let me see what happens here, actually. I don't have it, the analysis written out, so I'm going to have to actually figure it out, which is no fun. Uh, probably rook c1 is, is really strong, with the idea of rook c7. Just one possibility. Um, and what is white threatening in this position? Probably queen f7 and, and knight c5 and rook c1. And basically the position is just hopeless. Um, black cannot defend against these pieces. His king is stranded in the middle of the board. This knight on e6 is a monster. The queen on f5 is a monster. The rook on f1 is beautiful. And every, lead, every move pretty much leads to mate. Uh, I'm going to put the position in Houdini just for fun. Yeah, it says just white is just completely winning, like immediately. Uh, after after king d7, for example, it, it gives multiple winning moves. Like rook c1 is one. Uh, I mean, yeah, and, and it gives this as a possible defense. And then bishop to g5 is supposedly crushing. Because if bishop takes bishop, now this is checkmate. And we're threatening queen f7, followed by queen takes bishop. So a beautiful tactical idea from from Pillsbury. Uh, in the game, Lasker just gave up his queen and lost very easily. And we don't need to see the rest of the game. Uh, he's just a hopeless position, down a queen for a rook and a piece. But what a, what a remarkable combination. Rook to a1, and he gave up this a pawn on a3 to do this. And then sacrifice the exchange, sacrifice a piece, but black's king in the center of the board is totally trapped, and that's that. And one last defensive try, if bishop to b4, same thing happens. And there's really no real defense. We're threatening like queen g6 mate, and if you try to stop that, queen h5 mate. So thanks everyone for watching. A big feather in the cap of Pillsbury, and it would have really been interesting to see a, a match between these two players when they're like both at their prime. Never happened, unfortunately. Uh, so this is Lasker's first loss of the tournament. Thanks, guys, for watching. See you tomorrow.
Bye-bye.